Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Good Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, as you can see from the, uh, the title page, we're doing another gin episode of the show. Why not? There seems to be no slowdown in the uh, uh, production and new gins popping up and everybody seems to love them and all that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, before we get onto that, uh, if you'd been planning to meet up with us uh, at um, Whiskey Live in London late this month, then... It doesn't look like I'm actually going to be there now. I mean, um, several months ago, Rupert, you know, the, the editor of the Whiskey Magazine, was all for me being there, working on the, the, the Whiskey Magazine um, stand. And, yeah, you've got to be there. You know, we're, we're going to sort of announce the, the, the winner of um, the, the magazine's Battle of the Blends between Dave Broom and uh, Neil Ridley and all this kind of stuff. Um... And when I last spoke to him at uh, you know the World Whiskey Awards, it was like, well, I can't get the, the permission for the expenditure and all this kind of stuff, and it was all. And I thought, right, well, fine, I'll just leave it up to you. you know, you, if you want me to be there, you know, all it's going to cost you is a couple of nights stay in a hotel and train train fare. And well, you know, nothing's happened, so it pretty much looks like I'm not going to be there. Um, and pretty much, I can assume that uh, I'm not going to be uh, Dave Broom's replacement. Uh, for the um, the next battle of uh, battle of the blends, but Celebi, that's that's life. These things have a tendency to happen, and um, well, you move on, don't you? Anyway, talking of disappointments, I had hoped to be showing some samples from I think they're called the Experimental Gin Company from Wales. I contacted them because I was looking for some interesting gins, and um, yeah, they do. I think they do one that's finished in an X Red wine cast, and I thought, oh, that's a bit, bit, mm, could be, could be great, could be, mm. but until you try, taste it, you don't know these kind of things. So I contacted them, and said, yeah, 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 we'll send you some samples, and lo and behold, nothing's turned up, and I just, thought, oh, yeah, if you don't really want me to bother, you know, reviewing your product or even buying it, then don't, you know, then fine, don't send me the samples. Um, However, those that have sent me the samples, ta-da, are here in today's tasting. And, um, well, let's, let's just have a, have a bit of a, a waffle about them. I mean, um, the, the, the first company is the Tea Enriched Alcohol Company. And they sent me this lovely little box, you know, which contains, you know, three miniatures, you know, blurb, um, and all that kind of stuff. Really nicely packaged. And... Um, I tasted the, 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 the two gins, uh, the um, Jasmine gin and the Earl Grey gin. I mean, I love Earl Grey tea, so I thought, wow, this sounds really, really interesting. And I'm stocking them. Job done. Brilliant. You know, that's, that's the way these things kind of work. You know, you send samples, you like them, you buy them. Um, the company itself is based in Cambridgeshire. A uh, fairly small company. They do small batch production, 120 bottles per batch. Now... I'm not entirely sure whether they distill their own base spirit or not. I mean, I uh, probably should have asked the question, shouldn't I, before doing the show? But anyway, I didn't. Um, it, it's distilled from sugar beet, Cambridge's sugar beet, in Cambridge. And as far as I'm aware, there's only one relative... Well, there's a couple of distilleries in Cambridge here. One is kind of some kind of set up in the front room or something like that or so it seems with with sort of lab equipment but um it's this is a allegedly um single distilled pot still and so the only distillery i can think of in cambridge uh, is the english spirits distillery which is based in dollingham uh which has i think about 20 or so alambic still so they may well be doing the distilling on their behalf so anyway i'm guessing um, that as a, a single distilled um, gin that obviously the botanicals are added post distillation, macerated and then bottled so it's not like some of gins where uh, the um, uh, botanicals are macerated and then there's a secondary uh, distillation so the um, apparently all the, all the, the product, all, all the botanicals are uh, you know sourced um, from According to the website, the finest estates in Sri Lanka and Assam in India. So, um, so and you know we'll, we'll get on to obviously tasting it in due course. But uh, uh, that's um, the Tea Enriched Alcohol Company. Uh, we'll also be looking at Burleys, which I have looked at in the past and, as you know, quite enjoyed. I'll be looking at uh, two of their three bottlings. As you know, 
Uh, Burley's is si uh, situated in uh, Leicestershire and is um, uh, produced by the 45 West Distillers Company. Uh, all came about when Phil Burley and Jamie Baxter met in um, 2013 and then started started talking about you know making gin in uh, Leicestershire and um, Jamie had this wonderful idea of sourcing the botanicals from you know the woodlands around the distillery and yeah the rest is history they're sort of going from strength to strength they're absolutely everywhere they've got their own bar now you know the you know they're, they're, they're looking to sort of you know push um you know Burley's gin and well why not it's 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 pretty damn good gin I mean we'll talk about the individual gins when I introduce the lineup and about sort of the botanicals and all that kind of stuff um and finally we've got these two which could be interesting because these are dutch yes as you probably know the dutch are well renowned for, for their gin and more so their Geneva, which i will be doing in the next episode of the show so if you like sort of you know gins and Geneva and things like that then obviously uh, watch the next episode of the show because we'll be looking at those um so this is the uh, rut family who have been distilling Geneva gins and liqueurs since 1872, so you pretty much figure out they, they know what they're doing, don't you? Um, all botanicals uh, that they use in their gins are completely natural. There's no artificial ingredients, uh, flavourings, colourings, yada, 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 as you would expect. Um, the Rutt family apparently are no longer actually in control of the company. It was sold uh, to shareholders in, um, I think it was the early 90s, I believe, but they carried on the philosophy of the Rutt family using the same uh, recipes and continued it. Um, apparently, I'm, I'm guessing that they ploughed money into it because according to the website, uh, the, the, um, uh, the place hadn't had a... Um, a lick of paint since uh, since 1870. Well, they probably had, but um, it wasn't literally until 2008 where they actually started renovating the property. I mean, um, so can you imagine working in their office that dates back to sort of like you know pre-Victorian times? And you know, I imagine everything was stuck together with bits of sticky tape and waving. But no, 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 no honestly. Um, and apparently, this culminated in 2013 when they fitted new stills and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, there you have it. So we've got uh, obviously um, you know, uh, a couple of uh, local distilleries and one in Holland. And uh, so I think it should make for quite an interesting tasting. So I think we ought to introduce our sort of lineup. Right, we're going to kick off with the two Burley's gins. Now, I don't know what the base uh, alcohol uh, is made from, but uh, we'll be looking at, first we'll be looking at uh, the distiller's cut, which is bottled at 47%, and we'll then look at the export strength. Um, as you probably know, Burley's uses 11 different botanicals, that, like I said, apart from obviously the juniper, which I don't think grows in Leicestershire, but <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, so they use juniper berries, silver birch, dandelion, burdock, elderberry, coriander seed, cassia root, uh, cassia bark, I should say, sorry, uh, cardamom, fresh orange peel, orish, orris root, and angelica root. Now, um, the Apparently the difference between the two is that the distiller's cut, I believe, is supposedly slightly more floral. Um, I found the difference was, generally speaking, that the export strength was generally more oilier, less on the botanicals, but, you know, well, that was when I first tasted it, but we'll see. You know, things do change, you know, and, uh, well, we'll, we'll when, when we get there, we will, uh, we will see. Um, the two... Uh, uh, bottles, bottlings from uh, the Tea and Rich Alcohol Company. Uh, the Jasmine Gin, obviously, uh, Jasmine Gin. Yes, the Jasmine Gin. I keep I want to say Juniper Gin, but it has Juniper in it. Anyway, the Jasmine Gin, <laughs> main botanical, uh, aside from Juniper, is uh, obviously Jasmine Silver Tipped Tea. Uh, they also use uh, English Rose Petal, a Bay Leaf, Seville Orange jet Zest, Jest. <laughs> I jest. Um, and uh, Juniper and Coriander. Uh, the Earl Grey uses pretty much the same botanicals obviously without uh, the, the jasmine tea, uh, whereas that's replaced with Earl Grey tea and natural bergamot oil. So uh, could be interesting, you know, 
So, considering we stock it, I think that tells you all you need to know about what I think about it. Um, but obviously, when we get, we'll, we'll get there. And finally, the two rut gins. Now, uh, the first of the two we'll be looking at is their dry gin, um, which is uh, bottled at 40%, uh, I think, off the top of my head, because uh, I can't see the label. Uh, talking of ABVs, the Earl Grey and the Jasmine gin is bottled at 42%. <coughs> anyway, um, so the, the rut gin uh, has um, obviously juniper, uh, coriander, angelica, orris root, cassia, burnt orange peel and fennel. And finally, the, the last of the two rut gins is the celery gin. I think that kind of gives gives a big clue as to what one of the major uh, botanicals is in that. Yes, celery. Well, there you go. So I believe all the other botanicals are the same as the dry gin, but obviously with the addition of some celery. So um, there you have it. That's that's this afternoon's little lineup. I'm going to shut up now and um, toast some gin. Okay, so let's kick off with the distillers cup. Let's see what the nose gives us then, shall we? Wonderfully fresh, lovely intensity, um, plenty of juniper. A little bit of a floral note, I can see what they mean by that. I mean, it's obviously the dandelion and the elderberry. Are quite, quite sort of up there, noticeable. Um, beneath is a little bit of spice, the orris root, the cassia bark. But just love that freshness. I mean, yes, obviously, the ABV, 47%, is certainly going to help in that freshness. Um, but there's also a nice little bit of citrus as well. Really clean spirit as well. Really fresh, crisp. Just really nice gin. Pal Sweet initially, in actual fact, um, with quite noticeable orange note, although it's not too too orangey. Uh, it's certainly noticeable. Again, the sort of juniper comes through, and a real crisp intensity. Um, nice sort of spicy, sort of barky cinnamon, not cinnamon, um, coriandery aftertaste. Um, but oh dear, has has a kick. And I mean, I'm guessing. The whole point of sort of distilling a gin at quite a high ABV is essentially so that it, when it's mixed with with uh, tonic water, um, you don't lose so much of the intensity of the gin flavourings. Although I'm not a big fan of, of you know gin and tonic, it has to be said, or you know that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I just think on on its own, this is that's just an absolutely wonderful gin. Really, very very nice gin. Okay, so let's move on to the export strength. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Now there is a little bit more spirit character. It's got a kind of sort of barley, sort of wheaty, sort of heaviness to it. It's it's still fresh, probably a little bit fresher than than I remember it. I mean, um, I did mention it to. Um, to the distillery when I tasted these samples when they first resent them um, that uh, the export strength wasn't quite as as oily as what it was and you know I just wondered whether maybe Jamie had tweaked the recipe or not but apparently not it's just the way these things go um, some nice sweetness almost a little bit of smokiness kind of coming through sort of you know kind of um, like pan roasting sort of um, bark and, uh, and coriander seeds and things like that. Not so much citrus, uh, which does give the sort of this more spirit kind of character coming coming through. Um, 
I mean, I like this. I mean, it is just really different to, to the export strength. I mean, I think the export strength is probably the more popular of the two. Uh, but I think if you've had the export, um, the distiller's cut, sorry, is the more uh, the, the more popular of the two. But I think if you've had that, then you know it's worth trying the uh, distiller's cut. So, palette. Same ABV, but not quite so intense and crisp on the finish. Again, it's slightly fatter, rounder. I'm getting more spirit character. Again, that kind of what feels like kind of barley notes. Um, it's quite a full spirit, quite weighty. Um, again, the juniper, um, the, uh, the light floral compounds kind of come through. Probably a little bit more elderberry. Um, and like I said, not quite so crisp uh, and intense, just softer, rounder. Um, again, you know, just, just a really lovely spirit. Really, really impressive. Right, OK, so let's move on to the jasmine gin then, shall we? God, that is really pungent. Now, now this is the thing about, because it is single distilled, it's got a really heavy spirit character, which has a sort of slightly starchy kind of quality to it. Um, there's some nice sweetness, a little bit of almost kind of almond notes. Um, the botanicals are really subtle. It's sort of like, you know, soft jasmine. It's a little bit of orange, a little bit of coriander, juniper, it's really nicely balanced but the main thing is the spirit character and uh, to be honest with you that's what that's what kind of does it for me with with both gins and vodkas. I like to know what the spirit uh, the base spirit was actually made from and I'd like some kind of clues to that. Um, I guess to be honest with you to some gin aficionados that's probably not so important because they're more interested in the botanicals and the combinations of the botanicals and all that kind of stuff but for me I want to know where, where the spirits kind of coming from and this really has it, it is really quite pungent um, and unusual um, but the kind of juniper is sort of got a nice sweet slight sweet edge and kind of like sort of balances up that um, that kind of spirit character but yeah I like this this is Really, really impressive palette. Mm, again, really pungent, oily spirit. Again, quite a lot of the rose petal up front, in actual fact. And it's only then you start to get the juniper um, and the, um, the jasmine kind of come through. The jasmine kind of comes through on a finish. It's a little bit sweet, um, but it's kind of, again, the sort of impurities within the spirit kind of balance that up. It stops it becoming overly sweet. Um, and it's just really well balanced. It's very subtle. Um, and like I said, it's, it's more about the character of the spirit than it is per se about the actual botanicals. But I think, like I said, really nicely balanced. Um, yeah, I like that. That's, that's good. Good gin. And moving on to the Earl Grey. Now, if you don't like Earl Grey tea, you're not going to like Earl Grey gin at the end of the day. It's one of those things, isn't it? Um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's see one of those good us. Again, same spirit character, same subtle botanicals. Obviously, you get the Earl Grey, you get the, the, the bergamot. There's a little bit of almost biscuity kind of spirit character. Um, 
a little bit of orange, a little bit of, of coriander. Again, you know, the botanicals are very subtle and it's not like you stick your nose in it and you go, oh my God, that's Earl Grey. It's actually really subtle and, 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 and it's the spirit character that's up front. I mean, I know a lot. some people are not going to go for it. They're not going to, they don't like, they won't like it because it, it's just not a huge botanical monster, you know. Um, but for me, this really ticks all my boxes with, uh, with you know, regards to, uh, to interesting spirits, you know. Power. Again, it's just exactly the same as the jasmine t um, gin. It kicks off quite nicely with with the rose petals, and if it wasn't for the sort of the, the impurities in the uh, and spirit character, it could possibly come a little bit across a little bit soapy. But those kind of edgy kind of spirit notes kind of just stop that happening. Again, really quite subtle, the juniper, the bergamot, the earl grey, all kind of like comes through on the finish. And again, really nicely balanced. Not OTT in the uh, botanical uh, characteristics, more about the spirit. Mm. Like I said, ticks, ticks all the right boxes for me. That's, that's, that's good. Okay, so moving on to the Rut Dry Gin. Now let's see what um, Geneva distillers uh, uh, do with their gin then. Incidentally, the uh, the base, I know what the base spirit for this, this is a French winter wheat. And, um, and again, it has that spirit character, this like smoky, uh, wheaty spirit notes, which kind of almost have a slight sort of almost rye spiciness to it. I mean, I love um, spirits distilled from wheat because it just has that kind of wheat flake, wheaty character. Um, again, subtle botanicals, more about the actual spirit. There's definitely some some orange. There's, there's a little bit of smoky spice, a bit of angelic, a bit of orris. Mmm really well balanced and again not OTT on the juniper I mean yes I do like some gins that go nuts for juniper and you can go oh god yes that smells like gin um, but equally I, I like more spicier gins you know I like the sort of the woodiness the earthy characters um, and sort of talking about that um, I must get round to arranging going over to um, uh, to, to Burley's and uh, because they, they have what they have is a gin school uh, and you can distill your own gin in these little dinky little stills and um, the plan is I will get there at some stage hopefully do uh, 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 you know, do some filming there while I'm distilling my own gin which will be really really cool so um, hopefully that will happen uh, sometime over the summer I just can't get around to organising it um, but anyway I, I digress um, yeah, it's getting quite aromatic now. The juniper is starting to come sort of more to the fore, but like I said, it's the, 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 the main emphasis is on the, the, the character of the spirit, which is really nice. Up. Quite full, quite sweet, very orangey. I mean, less of the character of the, um, the, the the spirit on the palate, more of the botanicals, more of the orange, a um, bit of the juniper, a little bit of orris, a um, little bit, of, quite a lot of angelica. In actual fact, I'm getting quite a lot of that kind of coming through. Um, yeah, it's 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 not it's not bad. It's 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 okay. Um, I just wish that maybe there'd been more spirit character on the actual palette. Um, you know, if the, that the nose had mirrored the palette, but it certainly hadn't. But it's not it's not bad gin um, by any stretch of the imagination. It's uh, quite um, 
quite pleasant really. And finally on to the celery. Now I think if I'm right in saying that celery is one of these weird kind of uh, things that you actually expend more calories eating than you actually get from it. So um, kind of a pointless food really when you think about it and I mean you know I don't particularly like celery. I, well I don't dislike celery it's just that, you know I've never had that sort of, mm, I really fancy some celery kind of moment, you know. I'm not into that sort of dipping it in sh salt and all that kind of stuff, you know. That's, um, yeah, no. Anyway, <laughs> that's by the by. Let's, uh, let's see what the gin gives us then, shall we? Oh, that is soapy. Oh, that is really soapy. Um, quite sweet. I think I'm getting celery. It's got that slightly sort of watery green kind of character to it. Um, yeah, I'm not really enjoying this, it has to be said. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. Um, but it is a bit sweet, it's a bit soapy. Yeah, there's a bit of coriander, there's, there's just not enough spirit character. Um, and it's, yeah, that, I've often found that with a lot of gins I've tasted that they just have a soapiness to them. Uh, and. Um, I don't know whether that's kind of the cut point or whether it's kind of like the, the interaction with some of the botanicals that they use. Um, but this is not really floating my boat, it has to be said. Power. Probably not quite as soapy as a no as a nose, but still a bit soapy. No, it's not great. I mean, yeah, okay, I'm getting some celery. Well, I think I'm getting celery. It's got again, it's that kind of slightly watery, greeny kind of um, sort of characteristic, um, almost almost kind of cucumbery, you know. Um, it's sweet. Um, I'm not quite sure what that sweetness actually is. Um, possibly orange, but yeah, like I said, a little bit soapy, a um, bit of spice on the finish. It's not, it doesn't do it for me like, say, the other um, the other gins do, to be honest with you. Uh, and maybe this is the whole thing with sort of weirdly flavoured gins. But they, I mean, there you go, you've got Earl Grey and Jasmine. I mean, that's a bit peculiar, as we said, but that really works really well because the spirit character is just all there. It's really interesting. But um, the celery gin, not really doing it for me at all, it has to be said. Right, okay, so let's sum this tasting up. Now, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit that I don't know a huge amount about gin. Uh, obviously, you know, whiskey is more my thing, rum, all that kind of stuff. And um, But I know good spirit when it actually comes my way. And Burleys are producing some bloody good spirit. Uh, and it's not because they you know, invited me to go there. Um, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> it quite made me laugh when you know I reviewed them the first time round. Apparently, uh, I got a phone call saying um, from the then rep saying um, um, I got called into the office the other day and um, there was a, a this guy had, from Gauntlet's had done a YouTube video on our on our gin and apparently he was thinking, oh God, he probably hates it. And then they went, no, he loved it. And he was going, oh, thank God for that. Uh, and um, yes, I, I do love I, I like I do love the gin. I mean, it's, it is very popular in the shop. I mean, I I don't stock the signature, and the reason I don't stock the signature is that although it's good, it's just another gin. If you see what I mean, it, I'm, because the gin selection we have is not particularly big, it has to be kind of interesting and unique. And I think these two certainly kind of fit the bill. I love the distiller's cut. I love the freshness of the distiller's cut. And I love the slightly more robust, slightly more spirit orientated um, uh, uh, export strength. And I think they just work really nicely. They complement each other. Great, great spirits, it has to be said. Uh, the two tea gins. Well, 
an absolute revelation, I think. I mean, um, tick all the right boxes for me. Lots and lots of spirit character. Like I say, if you don't like gin or vodka or things like that with, with spirit character, then just steer clear of them because, you know, you're not going to enjoy them. But if you are interested in spirit character and, you know, botanicals, then um, these are really completely and utterly up your street. Not particularly expensive. Forget what we're selling for, but you can go on a website and find out. You know, it's not difficult. Um, and I think maybe the two, may, I, I like the Earl Grey more than I do the Jasmine, but, you know, that's just purely my taste. I think they're both exceptionally good spirits, and I just, like I said, really tick all the boxes uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Rut. Yeah, the dry gin was fine, it was okay, it was pleasant, you know, I kind of got some indication of, of, of the sort of like, uh, you know, the, the wheat-based spirit, balanced, pleasant, yeah, it was okay, um, but the celery gin oh, just did not do that, do for me at all, it was just like, oh, no, soapy, well, I'm guessing kind of celery kind of character, it's just, uh, just sort of not... Not my cup of tea whatsoever, so um, uh, I'm kind of really sorry about that one, but there you go, that's that's the luck of the drawer, as they say. So so there you have it, that's that's this week's episode of the show. Uh, I hope you've been entertained, I think it's been quite entertaining personally, uh, but then I'm doing it, so I would say that. Um, and um, like I said, next next episode of the show will be on the Geneva. It will include the, one of the Genevas that um, the Rutt family, uh, or the Rutt distillery or whatever you want to call it, uh, produces. So that will be kind of interesting. Um, and that's kind of pretty much about it for, for this week's episode of the show. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope this will, if you're into your gins, uh, you'll grab a bottle of one of these and give them a try and just not just take my word for it but um, anyway that's that's it for this afternoon so all that's left to say is uh, good afternoon and good gramming <laughs>